Yo, what is up guys, it Ghost here, and today we have the long-awaited update 6.3 patch notes to go over. This update will be coming out on Tuesday next week, the 30th of January. There are a lot of good changes in these update notes, like a new spectator mode for Portal, the Soflam has finally been fixed, and the APS shootdown Sentinel, Irish's gadget, has been changed as well. And then there's also a new event on the horizon. Before we begin, as always, if you do enjoy the content here on the channel, don't forget to hit up that sub button, hit the like button. We will be covering everything Season 7 right here on the channel once it finally releases in March. So... Thank you guys so much for that. Okay, first up here, there's a new event. So it says the Year of the Dragon is almost upon us. To celebrate this occasion, all players will be tasked with earning ribbons in order to unlock the Harmonic Balance weapon skin for the Super 500 as seen above. You'll also be able to earn the Curious Spirit weapon charm as well as an additional XP boost and tier skip reward to help you kickstart the year. Some of these items are also part of a new store bundle arriving with this event. Earnable items that are successfully unlocked also reduce the overall cost of this store bundle. So I thought this new event would come with a new game mode. Apparently it doesn't sound like that is the case, otherwise they surely would have mentioned it here in this post. So most likely we're going to see a return to control, shutdown and the other mid-season game modes that we've seen before. A new skin and a new charm and of course a new opportunity for EA to sell you a new bundle of cosmetics. But like they mentioned here, if you do plan on buying that bundle, I would recommend unlocking the two free items first because they are apparently part of that bundle, but unlocking them will reduce the overall price. Moving on, Squad Spectator Modifier for Battlefield Portal. So you will now have the ability to enable Squad Spectating with Battlefield Portal custom experiences. This will allow you to spectate your squad mates after dying before entering the deploy screen once more to redeploy similar to the experience within Hazard Zone. As part of this update, we will also be introducing the ability to disable the button on the spectator screen, which will prevent you from deploying, allowing for custom experiences to feature one life or tactical squad modes, while still allowing for spectating your immediate squad. So this is pretty cool. I like this a lot, but it's a shame that it's only for Portal and not for All Out Warfare. I would love to see, for example, a return of the small first-person camera that we had in games like Battlefield 4 on the spawn screen so that you could easily assess the dangers your squad mate is facing and ultimately whether or not that spawning on that player is a sound idea. The tactical squad or the one life modes, they do open up a lot of opportunities for more competitive style portal modes but unfortunately they will probably never be played because the portal servers are full of fast xp grind modes but if you are a portal creator and you decide to create some kind of a competitive mode using this new feature please do get in touch i would love to try it out with the community with you guys here on the channel. Players will now see a crossplay status indicator within the main menu if they currently have crossplay as off. So a nice little transparency change here. If you have crossplay turned off, you will more likely than not have difficulty finding a game. I don't really know why that is, but it seems to be the case for a lot of players, myself included. So I would always recommend having it turned on. Um, this new indicator will help you with that. We have extended the personal player color functionality to include more HUD elements. So you can set your own color, which will be visible to yourself within the options HUD section. So again, nice to see this section of options being fleshed out little by little. We already had team colors and squad colors, but now you can apparently set a different color for yourself. So that's pretty cool. They fixed an issue that could cause a player to not see a successful Soflam lock-on against vehicles. Okay, so most players probably won't even be aware that this was an issue, right? But I recently tried to record a video on stream where we set up a group of engineers with javelins, we had the tank with the staff shell which can also lock on, and then we had one guy Soflamming. And the idea was to see how effective of an anti-vehicle squad we could be. But almost every time our guy Soflamming so flammed, I did not see a thing. 
I saw no yellow box indicating that the target had been so flammed about 90% of the time, and so I ended up scrapping the video idea altogether. Now, unfortunately, that means that you dedicated so flammers out there have probably been wasting your time because none of your teammates with launchers were actually notified that a target was so flammed. So that has now apparently been fixed. So pilots, tankers, you better watch out. Now the penguins have applied extra glue to the C5, so they should now stick to vehicles with greater efficiency. Not really sure what this one refers to. I personally haven't really experienced any trouble C5ing vehicles myself, but it sounds to me as though the C5 was sliding off or bouncing off and not sticking on properly. So let me know in the comments, guys, if you've had any experiences of that yourself. The APS-36 shoot-down sentinel should no longer intercept smoke grenades. So this one is a big one for me, and it will completely change your ability to push angles, especially in redacted with smoke grenades. Really good change. I definitely agree that we need this gadget in the game to cut out some of that explosive spam, but they should have never been able to intercept smoke grenades. They fixed an issue that resulted in some high recoil fast firing weapons from gaining vertical recoil after the angle exceeded a certain value. So not sure which weapons they are referring to here, but uh, spoiler alert, the VHX does not receive a nerf in this patch, but it is one of those high rate firing weapons. So I wonder if it's actually received increased recoil now due to this change, and that's why they're waiting on, on putting in the nerf. The EBAA Wildcat now has access to air radar. The range of this can be altered via air radar settings within the options menu. So for those of you who aren't aware, normally only helicopters and jets get an air radar. It allows you to see all aircraft in the game out to, I believe, 600 meters. It may be more. I'll have to go and check in game. So this is going to be a bit of a game changer for the Wildcats. Instead of having to constantly scope out these skies looking for that faint silhouette of an enemy jet or an enemy helicopter, you can just look at your minimap and see the direction of incoming air vehicles at any time, which is obviously going to make strafing a wildcat and catching them unawares extremely difficult. I've already seen some rather divisive opinions about this from pilots, but I honestly still think you'll have a fair shot at taking down a wildcat without them seeing you, the attack helis have a lot of firepower against ground armor. The new rocket pods from the jets also have a pretty good amount of firepower. And, you know, for instance, if they're focus firing on another target other than yourself, you're still going to have a chance, I think. But I guess we'll have to wait and see how this plays out. Maybe I'm going to eat my words and it's going to be insane. But, um, you know, I'm not going to freak out just yet. Regular body damage to the MD540 Nightbird will no longer result in systemic failure. Players should target the avionics of the aircraft in order to disable it. So before, you could get a full disable similar to a hack on a Nightbird by simply shooting its, its frame, like the body of the helicopter from the side, or really any angle. Now you will have to target the avionics specifically, which is essentially like the front of the helicopter, where all of the panels are and all of the uh, instruments. Now they fixed an issue where air vehicles would not take damage when colliding with skyscrapers on hourglass. I'm just, this tickles me. This one's kind of funny because I can still remember that Shroud video where he's like crashing into the skyscrapers on hourglass and he's bouncing off them like a ping pong ball. And apparently that is just now being fixed. So better late than never, eh? And finally here, they have reduced the magnet effect that some helicopters may encounter while being close to the ground. Another nice little change here, this effect is actually supposed to help you land easier so that when you get closer to the ground, it, it essentially pulls you down. But more often than not, it actually makes it far too difficult to fly close to the ground when you don't intend to land without it pulling you down with what feels like the gravity of Jupiter. So that's great to see. And that is a wrap, guys. If I'm being completely honest, I did expect to see more changes in this update. We've waited a long time, and almost all of these things boil down to either bug fixes or slight mechanical changes or a couple of skins being added to the game. I do think almost all of them are certainly good changes, so I am happy to see them. But there's really nothing here that makes me like super stoked to jump in next Tuesday and play the game. And I feel that the game 
really needs some of that right now. It needs a bit of pull for the player base. Guys, leave me your thoughts below. Thank you for watching the video as always. If you want to see my take on the current state of Battlefield 2042's gun meta, go give this video a watch. But otherwise, have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.